folks, Dave here back at the studio. For this week, I'm working on a kind of a small project. Uh, this is a, a structure build. And what I'm doing is I'm finally getting around to building this tunnel portal over here in the Horse Thief Canyon and Hanging Rock area. And this tunnel portal is a little unusual in that it has a peaked roof. Uh, you don't see this very often on prototype railroads. However, you do see it often on Disney railroads. The Disney Imagineers, for whatever reason, historically have had a real affinity for peaked roof tunnel portals. Uh, they were originally on the Nature's Wonderland Railroad at Disneyland, and that design aesthetic has been carried over into the Big Thunder um, attractions at all the Disney parks. So I know I knew I had to have a at least one peaked roof tunnel portal here on the railroad. And that's what I'm going to be building this week. So let's see how it goes. Well, I built this uh, mock-up of this tunnel portal some years ago to check clearances, make sure everything fit. And of course I painted it uh, so it would blend in with the scenery a little bit. But every time I look at photos of that area of the layout, it bothers me that it's not finished. So I thought it was high time we get this done. Now to draw up uh, plans for this that I'll be using as, as templates during construction, you know, I could go into CAD and I could do it that way, or I could uh, render it in Adobe Illustrator like I often do for a lot of my structures, but I'm just gonna go and use some good old eight by eight or four by four grid paper and draw it up full size with a pencil. Here's the drawing I'm going to work from. I went ahead and actually went over it in ink uh, so you could see it, which is probably a little bit more than I would usually do. Um, I called out the dimensions of the lumber here, too, that I'm going to be using. I'm actually going to frame and build this just like a real structure. So it's going to have prototypical framing uh, rafter trusses. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these rafter trusses which will be made from four by eights uh the walls will be eight by eight timbers and uh a 12 by 12 footer down here on the bottom to make the whole thing stable uh and then of course it's going to be clad with one inch or so boards and for those i'm going to use um, this product right here which i get down at my local walmart in the craft department, these skinny sticks. They're basically coffee stir sticks, and I use them for all kinds of stuff. They scale out to about, mm, I wanna say, two and a half inches thick by 12. It's a nice big heavy timber for something like this, and that's what I'll be using here and to clad the sides of it. So the first thing that I wanna do is stain a whole bunch of lumber, um, before I start construction. But first we need to mix up some stain. And I'll show you how I do that next. Uh, you've seen me use this stuff before. It's two ingredients, 70% isopropyl alcohol and black India ink. Uh, some people prefer shoe, shoe dye. I, I've used both with good results, uh, but it's basically the same kind of mixture. Uh, you have to mix up a fresh batch every once in a while, because if you don't, what happens is over time, the rubbing alcohol actually breaks the ink down and you, you get a kind of a real granular finish to it. It starts to dissolve the ink. And so when you go to stain things, you get more of a granular finish, which can be cool too, which can be useful, but it doesn't soak into the wood as well. So I like to make a fresh batch up when I'm starting on a project like this. And I'll show you. I don't use a lot of scientific measurements. I eyeball it, I know, shocking. So, take some rubbing alcohol and put that in first. Eh, don't need that much. It's probably about a quarter cup or less. And I'm just gonna 
for a little bit of India ink in here. I'm going to test it out. This is one of those uh, coffee stir sticks that I'll be using on the model. I'll test and see if this is dark enough for what I want. I can facilitate drying with a hair dryer, which is something I like to do because I'm impatient. Okay, well that looks pretty good. You see that? Not bad. I got it right the first time. Now before I stain this wood, I want to go through and distress each and every piece with a razor saw to give it some uh, wood grain. Takes a little while, but it's worth it. And when I have a lot of wood to stain like this, I find it really speeds things up. I have like a have a shallow container. Just pour your stain in there. Throw the pieces in. A lot quicker than doing them one at a time. A little stir. You don't have to let them uh, soak in here for very long. In fact, you don't want to. What you can do is let some soak longer than others, so you'll get some variation with the amount of stain. You'll get some pieces that are darker than others. Make sure you get good coverage on all the pieces. And then, I just pull them out onto a pad of paper towels one by one, let them dry. Now for longer pieces like this that I don't want to cut just yet, a lot of times I'll just use a paintbrush. Get some stain on there. Okay. That should be all the wood that I need for this build and uh, we're going to let that dry overnight and then come back and start putting this thing together. Well, okay, it's a little time has passed and um, our stain is now completely dry on our basswood pieces. Got a nice aged silvery patina to it. Really like the way that looks. Uh, but before I start assembling things. I want to um, use my my drawing to make a template that I will build the uh, the tunnel portal right on top of. So to do that, I'm going to use some excuse me, good old Super Seventy Seven uh, spray adhesive, and glue this up onto a piece of foam core. And that ends up looking just like that. Now to make sure I build this nice and square, I'm going to use some scale 8x8s here. And uh, actually create a jig right on top of my drawing. Keep things as square as possible. And then I can go and build it right up against this. Okay, and there's our, our jig for building on, but it's not quite ready yet. Now I have to cover this with some, um, some clear packaging tape to keep the glue from sticking when I assemble the, uh, the walls and pieces on top of this. Now that I've got the tape on there, I am ready to start cutting and assembling the pieces. And I think the first part I'm gonna build is this back wall which goes up against the cliff face here. I want to show you a little trick I picked up. Um, if you don't happen to have a miter box handy, you can just take a piece of uh, wood or MDF that you know is square, line up your mark right with the edge, 
and take a razor saw with a back on it, a back saw, and bring it right up flush to the edge there and cut down. And that will give you nice straight cuts. Copy stir sticks for this kind of thing. It's because they are imperfect. Uh, this one's got a little break along this side. They're not necessarily all the same width. So if you're going for a rustic, rough hewn look, this is a great option. Um, if you just would use like a really nice, clean milled basswood on this, you could spend a lot of time roughing it up to make it <laughs> look like this. But these come this way right out of the box. You have to be kind of selective. You have to go through and find ones that aren't too warped or bent or whatever. Uh, and you can use those later in different places. But <clears throat> that's why I like using these. I wouldn't use them on something I wanted to look new and pristine, but on something that's supposed to look uh, rustic and uh, kind of, I don't know, somewhat hastily built. They work great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the little pieces to match this shape here. And uh, this subassembly will be done. Okay. Well, there is your basic back wall of this thing. And the next part I want to build is I need to build these two, the two um, sides. You need to frame those in and do exactly the same thing. Frame these and then clad them with the uh, <clears throat> with the boards, just like that. So that's what we're going to do next. Now these have a, uh, a 12 by 12 footer down here on the bottom. And then 8 by 8 studs, I guess, coming up like this. Another 8 by 8 there and a couple of braces in between. So pretty pretty simple. Should go, should go together pretty fast. sides done. As you can see on this one, I uh, made it a little more beat up. One of the boards miss missing and I broke one. Give it a little wear and tear look. Uh, now before I glue these into place, I'm going to go through and, <coughs> excuse me, use a uh, five inch pencil, which I've sharpened down here. Nice and sharp. Five inches of real hard lead. And, uh, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to add some nail holes. Now I can go ahead and make sure these are nice and flat on the side that mates with the backing. Here's my sanding block. And I can glue these into place, I think. To build the roof trusses, once again, I'm going to be using my uh, template drawing and these uh, four by eight timbers. This time I'm using um, uh, dress pins to hold the pieces in place while the glue dries. So let's go ahead and make one of those right now. That's one, six more to go. All right, well, I've got my seven 
uh, A-frame trusses for the roof. Now, those of you who are familiar with roof construction might note that I've left out in a very important detail, and that is the ridge beam that will connect all these trusses together. Um, so I'm cheating a little bit. What I'm gonna do is rather than have a, a solid ridge beam go through, I'm going to uh, put the first one in back here, and then I will use a small, this is a piece of 332nd square like that to align uh, the rest of them. And then I'll go in and put in kind of a faux ridge beam above this, and you won't even be able to see this piece when all is said and done. So I'm gonna start putting that together now. Got uh, six of the roof trusses in and my kind of faux ridge pole or uh, ridge beam in there like that. I did that just by cutting pieces of uh, six by eight to size. It's nice and sturdy. Now before I finish the roof and put in the final roof truss up front, I want to clad the front of this in some, some of this wood siding just like the rest all the way around like that and then we'll get the roof built and uh, get this thing done today I think okay and that's what that looks like with the uh, nice wood cladding on there and for the roof panels I'm going to be using these uh, 1 32nd inch thick uh, scribe laser scribe plywood pieces that I happen to have in my scrap box. However, uh, you could use a uh, illustration board or you could do it, you know, board by board, which would be uh, the prototypical way to do it, uh, to build up your roof. But I have these, so I'm gonna use them. It's got this nice scribed um, uh, board detail underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and stain this uh, with the India ink and alcohol mixture and We'll get those glued into place next. All right, so the roof panel's on. Now I can put this final A-frame truss in right there. For the roofing, I'm going to be using Cedar Shake Shingles. These are peel and stick cedar from Crescent Creek Models. Now you justifiably might question the wisdom of uh, <laughs> roofing a structure that steam trains are going to go under, uh, wood burning and coal burning uh, steam trains with cedar shake shingles. Mm. I would also question that wisdom, but that's the way Disney does it. So since it's inspired by a, a Disney structure, we're gonna go with the shingles. But rather than uh, stain them this time, I'm going to use uh, Vallejo Dark Earth in my airbrush and um, see how that looks. I want a little bit of a, a little bit of a contrasting color to the gray stain which is on the walls. So let's uh, get the airbrush out and we'll do that. Yeah, I think that's going to work quite nicely. I went through with the airbrush and uh, did a lot of variation in here as much as I could, kind of, you know, give it a little age and a uh, little character. So we'll uh, start on the first strip, work our way up the building.
is put a row of cap shingles along the top here. But I have something else in mind for this particular structure. I think I'm going to build a little platform up here with some fire barrels on it. I built up the barrel platform with a couple of coffee stir sticks and some 4x6 basswood, sanded to fit the angle of the roof. Then I measured and marked the roof for some stair steps, building those from some scale 2 foot long strips of O scale 2x4. I added a strip of coffee stir stick along the top of the back wall to give a finished look, and then glued the stair steps into place on the roof. for the primer to dry on those barrels, those resin barrel castings. I'm going to go back and uh, touch up all the cut off ends of the boards with a little bit of our uh, silvery stain here. Resin barrel castings from Wiseman Model Service were primed to dark brown and then finished with Vallejo acrylic paints. I think this is about done. But before I go install it on the layout, I want to add a little bit more weathering using my colored chalks. In particular, I want to add some black soot where the locomotives, all those passing locomotives going in here. I'm just using artist chalk that I uh, I grind up on some, uh, some sandpaper, brush it on. I don't use any kind of fix or anything uh, with the chalks. I find they stay on there just fine without it. And fixatives like dull coat tend to uh, make the weathering just disappear. So I want to be able to see it. Okay, I think we're ready to see what this looks like on the layout. Now, the moment of truth. Just like the glove. Well, that makes for a pretty nice addition to this scene. I just need to finish the rock work and balance the track back there before I glue it in place. And then uh, I think that'll work pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out. I had a lot of fun building this and I hope you enjoyed following along. I'll see you next time, amigos. Adios for now. <laughs>